tonight as you make your way into a restful, restorative sleep, we will embark on the story of Thumbelina. A story told for nearly 200 years, it's about miracles and how big the world can feel when we are very small. Hello, welcome to Sleep Stories with Luna Yes. Before we begin our tale, let's take a moment to settle in. You have selected this video because you are ready for a good night's sleep. Therefore, we want to make sure you are available for that sleep whenever it arrives. If it feels right to you, I invite you to stretch your arms and legs, taking up as much space as you can. Perhaps you position yourself into the shape of a star or with your arms out in front of you in the air. making your limbs as long as possible. Feel the length in your muscles extending to the very tips of your fingers and toes. Perhaps your toes are pointed to make yourself even longer. Maybe you find length in one side of your torso by stretching your right leg and right arm further away from one another. Imagining the increasing space on the right side of each vertebrae of your spine. Now you can return to a neutral spine and find this space on the left side of your torso. creating a longer distance between your left leg and left arm. Letting that go, feel free to return to a neutral position. Arms back down at your sides and with your feet returning to a hips width distance apart. You are exploring how your muscles feel in this moment and giving them a chance for one final stretch before coming into rest. Maybe it feels good to make small circles with your wrists or your ankles feeling the range of motion available to you. Taking your right hand, reach across your body to hold your left. See if you can do this with your eyes closed, allowing your mind to guide you. With the fingers on your right hand, explore how it feels to massage the palm of your left hand. As firmly or as gently as you wish. Send some love into your left hand. Notice how it feels to massage the different areas of your palm. Feel free to extend this massage into the crease of your wrist or up into your fingers. Taking a moment at all three segments of each finger Provide some relief to your pinky, your ring finger, 
your middle finger, your index finger, and your thumb. So much of our lives revolve around the use of our hands. Yet, when we give our bodies some love, the hands are perhaps the easiest to forget. In fact, this may be the first little hand massage you've ever received. Know that it is always available to you. Now switching hands, take the palm of your right hand in the fingers of your left. Press into the palm of your right hand, feeling the strength of the muscles at the base of your thumb. The sensitivity of the muscles connecting the thumb to the rest of your hand. This space between the thumb and index is where a pencil would rest if you were to sign your name. Feel the delicate bones of the knuckles through the padding muscles at the base of the fingers. And the strength of the muscles on the outside edge of your hand. Massaging each finger. Take a moment of gratitude for the marvelous intricacies that are your hands. Between the wrist, palm, and fingers, your hands have 27 small bones, 34 muscles, and over 100 ligaments, tendons, and nerves. Your hands are small miracles of design. A constellation of delicate pieces, all working together to let you express yourself. And manipulate the world around you. If your hand massage is complete, return to a comfortable position of your choosing. Perhaps your body feels most at ease on your back, on your side, or on your stomach. With gratitude for your body, settle into whatever position feels best tonight. Take a slow, deep breath in. Filling your lungs with the oxygen that will travel to all the cells of your body. Whenever you're ready, let that breath go. With this care, Allow yourself to find sleep during this video in the same way as our hand massage. With the knowledge that your body is a magnificent structure and with the trust that your body will arrive into sleep when it is ready. With this intention set, let's begin our story. Once upon a time, there was a woman who lived in a small village. The woman had kind eyes and a patient smile. 
but was never able to have a child of her own. She spent her days in her kitchen chair, looking out over her small garden, thinking of the joy having a child would bring her. One day, after many weeks of daydreaming, the woman heard a knock at the door. On her doorstep stood an old witch, tired from the road. The witch's hair was knotted from the wind and her feet sore from walking. I mean you no harm, said the witch. And if you have it in your heart to let me come in and stay the night, I shall grant you one wish. The woman eagerly let the witch come in and sit in her kitchen chair. Though the woman certainly had a wish in mind, it was also not in her nature to turn her back on someone in need. She gave the witch a comb to brush her hair and supper that evening. The woman had made a stew from the vegetables grown in her garden and made sure the witch was well nourished for her travels. The next morning, as the witch gathered herself to leave, she said, You have been most kind to me. You've offered me food, shelter, and companionship. Is there a wish I may grant you? With her eyes full of hope, the woman said, I wish for a child. I was never able to have one of my own. But my heart yearns to be a mother. The witch smiled as if she already knew this is what the woman wanted. Hold out your hand, my dear the witch said. In her open palm, the witch placed a single barley seed. Plant this in your garden and water it generously. Then you will get your wish. As soon as the witch left, the woman walked to her garden and kneeled down. Digging a small well with her hands, she kissed the barley seed and set it in the little hole. As she watered the soil, the woman watched a stem begin to sprout slowly from between the clumps of dirt. Soon, the stem became wide and strong, with fresh leaves and a delicate yellow flower on top. As the plant soaked in the new sunlight, the petals of the yellow flower opened. 
revealing a tiny little girl inside. The size of the woman's thumb. The woman had never felt such happiness and decided right then that she would name this little girl Thumbelina. In the days to come, the woman's loneliness disappeared. And she spent her time caring for her new daughter. At night, Thumbelina slept in an empty walnut shell. with a rose petal for a blanket. They spent their days making up stories to tell one another. And the woman made Thumbelina dresses from tiny pieces of fabric she cut from the sleeves of her own dresses. The two were happy together until one fateful evening. While Thumbelina slept soundly in her walnut shell and the woman in her bed, a warty toad hopped through the kitchen window. He spied the sleeping Thumbelina and immediately was impressed by her beauty. Why, here is the answer to my troubles, the ugly creature croaked. This pretty thing will make the perfect wife for my son. With that, he picked up the walnut shell and leaped back out of the window, taking care not to wake the kidnapped girl. The hideous toad family gawked and stared at the tiny sleeping Thumbelina. She's perfect, screeched the toad son. And together, the toad family placed Thumbelina's walnut shell on a lily pad in the center of the stream. When she awoke, Thumbelina found herself surrounded by water in a foreign place. She could not swim and was utterly petrified now all alone in the world and taken from her mother. Falling to her knees on the smooth leaf of the lily pad, Thumbelina wept. Suddenly, the wide-eyed faces of two guppies appeared, their constant opening and closing mouths lifting above the surface of the water. Thumbelina introduced herself to the fish and explained her plight.
We can help you, miss, the fish exclaimed. We can eat through the stem of the lily pad and turn this prison into a boat. Thumbelina was incredibly grateful to her rescuers. Together, the fish tossed a reed of grass onto the lily pad for Thumbelina to steer. And the guppies nibbled at the underwater stem. After a minute, Thumbelina felt the lily pad begin to float. freed from the spot where the Toad family had left her. Thumbelina waved goodbye to the fish and focused on the water ahead, unsure of where it would take her. Thumbelina did not know the direction back to the woman's house nor could she control the direction the stream would take her. All Thumbelina knew was that she needed to escape from her captors. After a few hours, the lily pad touched up against a sandy bank. Taking this chance before she traveled even farther, Thumbelina leapt off her boat onto land. As the days passed, Thumbelina learned to live amongst nature. She nibbled at the berries that grew along the river and slept in the shade of the tall grasses. When winter came, Thumbelina knew the dress the woman made her would not be able to keep out the chill of cold. One morning, as she awoke to frost on the grass instead of dewdrops, she came across a brown field mouse offering to comb the mouse's fur if she let Thumbelina stay the winter in the mouse's burrow. The mouse, knowing she had tufts of fur she couldn't reach, agreed to let the small girl stay. And showed Thumbelina her home under the knots of a great tall tree. That winter, Thumbelina and the mouse became great friends, looking out for each other and sleeping snuggled together in the mouse's nest under the tree to keep cozy throughout the long winter nights. A few weeks into the start of winter, they came upon an injured bluebird in the snow.
its left wing had been sprained in the strong winter wind. And the bird could no longer fly south for the winter. Together, the field mouse and Thumbelina guided the poor creature back to the mouse's nest. where they used to twig and dried grasses to make a splint for the bird. By the early days of spring, the bluebird's wing had fully recovered and the three had become great friends. Though they all promised they would visit one another, with winter gone, it was time for them to go their separate ways. With the blue bird's newly regained flight, she offered Thumbelina a ride on her back. They could fly high in the air and see for miles around to spot the woman's home Thumbelina had been taken from one year ago. Once the bird landed in the woman's garden, and the two said farewell, Thumbelina called to her mother. Overjoyed and crying tears of happiness, Thumbelina and the woman were reunited once more. The woman was so proud of Thumbelina's bravery. And new friendships. And she told Thumbelina the field mouse and bluebird were welcome to come visit anytime. In their lovely house, with the garden out front, they lived happily ever after. I hope this story has been helpful as you fall asleep tonight. If you are still awake, please be kind to yourself. There is never a need to rush into sleep. You will find it when your body is ready on its own time. In the meantime, feel free to check out our other content. We have other sleep stories for you to enjoy, as well as videos on sleep meditation and sleep hypnosis if you'd like to try something new. For more Luna Yes sleep stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sweet dreams.